So are we already yeah. near, nearing our first talk? Samantha, hello. So, hello. yeah. Uh, let's see. So at least Samantha and I are prepared for the first session, which is, hmm, what is it called in the schedule? It's me and HPC, right? Me and HPC or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how I learned to stop worrying and love computing. So this is sort of like the story of um, like the big picture of what we're doing here and why and what nice things come out of it. Um, let's see, do we have a section for this yet? I think one of our HackMD people will add a section down there. So yeah, um, what are we here to talk about? So, well, first off is this icebreaker, which is the first thing. So Samantha, how did you start your computing? And well, who are you and how did you start your computing? <laughs> and then I'll answer. Yeah, maybe I'll start with who am I? So hi everybody. Um, I'm a background geoinformatics person. Um, right now I'm doing a part-time PhD and I'm also like a researcher at the Finnish Geospatial Research Institute or the PhD is at Aalto and the Finnish Geospatial Research Institute and then I also recently started as a geoinformatics specialist at CSC which you will also hear about later mm -hmm. today already and then I think in the last day as well and uh, like Simo already said like I, I went through the whole thing in the last five or six years about from like getting to know what is scientific computing and getting to know what is a, a high performance computer and everything towards uh, where I'm now actually helping people like you probably mm -hmm. um, to use the, the high performance computing systems and um, really enjoying also the community aspect of it together with uh, Aalto and then also code refinery people and dis discussing all these things that I would not have known anything about uh, before I started the PhD, before I started like in this more computational research field. Yeah. So I'm really happy to be here. And maybe Richard, you can introduce uh, yourself yeah. as well. <laughs> so I'm Richard Darst. I started my studies in chemical engineering, then chemistry, then a bunch of other stuff. So to answer the question from before, I haven't ever really formally studied this computing stuff. And in fact, whenever I started, so I started, I first got involved in some research during my bachelor's degree, and I didn't really know what I was getting into. Like I had only dabbled with computers and programming a little bit, but didn't consider myself very good or very specialist or anything. But I really enjoyed it. And from there, well, by paying a bit more attention to that than the science behind stuff, then I eventually arrived where I am now. Where are you so, now? <laughs> oh, yeah. that's OK, so I work at Alto University in the science IT team, or as we call ourselves, Alto Scientific Computing. And a lot like Samantha, I'm here and I support people with the computing. So it's not so much about the, like doing the calculations or how would I say? Yeah, so like Samantha said, <laughs> my interest is not, well, I enjoy the programming and the calculation and computing, but what really makes it good is the community and being able to help people and working together in great teams to do things like, well, like this workshop. Yeah, so, Let's see. Um, did we answer Maybe the Maybe for me as well, um, how I started this a little bit. Um, when I when I really like got to know into this whole scientific computing thing, um, I came from university from the masters where we have been taught a lot of uh, commercial software, commercial uh, graphical user interface or GUI software which uh, like was the well the thing they did in the in the courses generally I think nowadays it's already 
gotten a bit better, but it also def depends a bit on the field what, what is really taught. And then when I started at the Finnish Geospatial Research Institute, the task was like to process a lot of data mm. that mm. Uh, where we then just need the results in the end. So that was like what I got. And then I was also already told like, yeah, uh, this is so much data and the processing is gets in between quite complicated or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, that you cannot really run it on your laptop. So mm -hmm. there is this CSC, high performance computer, mm -hmm. uh, go there, get, do their courses, get to know how to use it, and then you I can see. do your processing there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I made lots of mistakes there as well and uh, very inefficient workflows. Um, in the beginning, but through that, I also then learned a lot by asking questions from the support team, yeah. by talking to people doing similar stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. And that got me here now. <laughs> cool. So we've talked a lot about uh, scientific computing. So, like, what what is this thing that we're mentioning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I guess there is also then this uh, like computing for science or computers for mm -hmm. science and mm -hmm. computational science we had uh, talked about. And yeah, I, I guess, is it definable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some one of my friends once told me, you all, like, you all always talk about scientific computing, but what is that? Like you all are saying that's what your team does, but I think you just made that up. And I'm really not sure. Like yesterday we were trying to define what these things meant. Maybe let's come down to the section. Let's ask the question, what is scientific computing versus computational science versus whatever else? So my personal definition was something like, what was it? So scientific computing implies something slightly more about the tools and the processes of doing the computation. While um, like the computational science is the, a term that's more focused on the scientific domains somehow. Oh, wait, was there, yeah, there was something like, yeah. And what's the difference between scientific computing and using computers? Yeah, I guess the the using computers for science, um, many disciplines like touch that at some point, like when you have your lab uh, experiments or something and you need to record your, your experimental result or something, then you maybe have an Excel sheet where you put in your your results and then in the end maybe you sum it up or you you do some statistical calculation yeah. uh, very basic just for your report and mm -hmm. i think that falls more than into this using computers for science maybe yeah but from there it's rather easy to then go more to scientific computing like when you when you see what what you do with this data what you do yeah. uh, with the data that you have collected yeah and what tools do you use to do something to it? Yeah. Like I've always thought of, yeah, like somehow, like what would you say? It's like if you're doing scientific computing versus using a computer, you're somehow making new things or somehow connecting things. Like you're doing more than using off the shelf consumer products and pushing some buttons, but you have to make some buttons yourself. <laughs> hmm, is that, yeah. Right. You need to to give something to get something mm -hmm. and i guess there um it also yeah. depends a lot on yourself like this scientific computing it's not one thing for everyone but uh, there is really different paths that you can approach this and that yeah. you can uh also like get into it mm. um like there is people that like just maybe want to uh, want to use some tools to do the job and then are done with it. And then mm -hmm. there's other people that are like really more interested in the tools and what is the most efficient way uh, to do one thing mm -hmm. and that then read and learn a lot 
about what is out there and try to find the, the really the, the perfect tool for the job. Right. But not everyone also has to do that. Mm -hmm. Like not everyone needs to find the most efficient way of doing a job. Yeah. Sometimes like, it's also just enough yeah. to get it done and then be done with it yeah. and be happy about it. I think, um, would you say that, um, yeah, yeah, like I've worked with people and I've always been the person that's more interested in the tools somehow, mm -hmm. and thus has been the mentor to other people who are slightly more focused on the science. Are you sort of like that also? <laughs> Sounds or... like you're in the right position right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I went there fairly recently, I would say like that in the beginning, it was more like finding the tool that does the job because like I needed to have time for for the research, mm -hmm. for the research itself mm -hmm. also. So it was like, okay, I found a tool, it does the job, so I'm happy with it, even if it takes a bit longer or if it uses too many resources or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, lately I've been getting more interested to also then be able to help uh, our users or my fellow researchers yeah. to to do it more efficiently mm -hmm. without themselves spending a lot of time on doing yeah. this kind of research yeah. on the tools. And I guess when starting out with it, uh, it's very easy that you feel very overwhelmed. I remember that feeling as well for me when I started. It was, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I said, I used this commercial GUI software so, so with the user interface and then suddenly they told me oh yeah on the on the hpc system you have to use the command line so mm -hmm. you can talk to it only by typing something mm -hmm. you cannot click anything um yeah. then this and this software you cannot use there so you have to like find other software to do your to do mm -hmm. your stuff mm -hmm. and then also uh because we needed our own very tailored solution for this process. There was also this programming topic still in the room. So there was the question of which programming language to learn now and uh, uh, how to get started with it. So uh, I, I very much remember this feeling of being overwhelmed mm -hmm. by all the possibilities and all the tools that are out there. And yeah. I think this course, the upcoming next days, hopefully helps you a lot with that. Yeah. Sort of had the same thing. Like it's I've, over... like there's so many things and I've seen so many people, like it seems almost that everyone's overwhelmed with all these things to learn, especially coming from your courses and then needing to start doing things. Like people say, okay, let's do projects in your courses to, to prepare for the real world. But the real world still seems so much different than these projects somehow right like yeah, like how many different things yeah, and the people... does one need to know yeah yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really crazy and then yeah. like uh, of course one also fears to do things wrong then especially when you are going like outside of your own computer well mm. this seems more like a safe environment when you yeah. are in your own computer but then when you go to other places and use these bigger systems um, for example, then there is this feeling of, oh no, now I cannot do anything wrong because I might mm -hmm. break other people's, mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Like, and I wonder if that also sort of holds people back somehow, like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. But, but hmm. you did say yesterday, is there actually something you can break much? Yeah. Like, is this fear reasonable? <laughs> Yeah, that so yeah, like break it really a lot of other people's things shouldn't be. So even if you're a little bit inefficient when you're starting off, there's people that are doing far bigger things and well, you're small like yeah, when you're starting, you're doing small things and I mean, if if the system was designed where you could break something for other people, then it's a problem of the system, not a problem with you. So right. Yeah. So maybe someone is even grateful if you break something, <laughs> because then you found a place where things do not go as they should. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like to think that most support staff get in the, or understand when people are new. And, you know, we really want people to be able to do better computing. So that's 
really important. But yeah, like and the... if you if you really like, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say like as they say, don't let perfect get in the way of doing things better. So right. Yeah. Like these days, one of my catchphrases is "worse is better," and you can go like find it on Wikipedia and read about the philosophy. But yeah, like there's so many times I tell people, okay, like just let's make it a little bit better and then keep improving it rather than spending forever trying to make things perfect. Yeah, and it also depends what you want to do with it afterwards. Like if it's just for you currently right now, yeah. just do it. And if it works, then it's fine. And then you can always come back and do things more efficiently and mm -hmm. do it step by step but it's it's usually good to have it have it there first because then maybe your colleague or whoever does something with what you have produced there can at least start working yeah and i think that's it's quite important to 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 keep that in mind that things do not have to be perfect also in preparation mm. of uh, for asking questions from the Mm -hmm. from from people who are maybe more experienced yeah uh, you don't have to have tried everything to to like start asking others on how, how how to do it better or how to yeah how to do it actually yeah and i think we will hear also still today something about this yeah how to best ask questions and yeah. what to keep in mind there yeah it's like how how did you ask for help when you were young so I see there's a question in HackMD, like how long do you spend time or how long to spend on a problem in computer science? One week, then give mm -hmm. up, try a different route. I mean, what about work a little bit and then ask for help or then work with someone else? So what's your mm -hmm. thoughts on the matter? Mm, I, I usually like to spend some time uh, myself if I have an idea of how it could work. So then I, I start and like Google around a bit, um, but and and then maybe if I don't find the right solution for me, I go and ask for uh, experiences from others that I know do similar things. Mm -hmm. And if those are non-existent, then maybe also ask the support yeah. team of the uh, well in Alto, it's the Alto Scientific Computing Support, mm -hmm. for example. Um, but sometimes there's also problems where I have no idea how I would start even Googling anything about it. And mm -hmm. then it might be good to go, for example, to the uh, garage or go to people who have experience with it and know better, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. uh, explain what you want to do. And then yeah. there can come out at least some, some starting points right. where to start looking for, yeah. for things that can help you. Yeah, like I've developed a theory that. How would just... you like? To... Oh, go ahead. I've de... How would you like to uh, people to do it? Like, yeah, would you would you yeah. want people to come right away? I mean, and yeah, ask, like, or would you like them to do some research? People should definitely be coming sooner, but I think the most important aspect is sort of the community somehow. Like, you can best learn from the mm -hmm. people in your office. And I mean, you could say that, yeah, remote work makes this a little bit more difficult, but also I saw that working in the same office isn't necessarily better if like everyone has their own computer in their own corner and you're not um, close to each other. Um, yeah, like. Yeah, you know, I've, I've also seen it in many occasions now that it's actually, it's easier to go in a Zoom chat and then really share your own screen to ask something specific about your own code or mm -hmm. to um, like maybe even pair program something together than yeah. sitting next to each other and staring or trying to stare at one screen with one keyboard. Yeah. And nowadays there's so many tools that help with really also doing it together, not even screen share, but um, mm -hmm. where you can work in the same document together and see mm -hmm. what the other one is writing. Yeah. Uh, so in a way, I also think that this online did not necessarily um, make it worse, but in some ways, it maybe even make, made it better. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like 
I've seen many of my previous groups, all of the group meetings are about presenting science. So basically hide all of the steps you took to get there and then say some result. And that's not really sharing this kind of knowledge. So make sure that you build this knowledge sharing into your daily work. And yeah, learn from each other, ask the expert or whoever your um, like people within your immediate community, and then you can go up and ask for more help from larger people. Yeah, and if you can, like talk to your colleagues that have at least a similar research topic than you, there mm -hmm. might always be uh, something surprising coming up, some tool that you have not thought about or yeah. anything like that. Or like when you are really on your own because your colleagues do very different things, then mm -hmm. um, there you can still talk to your rubber duck <laughs> on your desk and like tell tell the problems that you have and sometimes like mm. talking it out loud really makes you then think differently about it and yeah. you you get to the kind of solution or at least a starting point for your problem yourself yeah and then of course there is all the the support staff that that is there for you with an open mm. ear or and that reads your emails yeah when you have specific problems. Yeah. So what are the next steps to um, do things? We sort of, yeah. Like the other day we were preparing this, we divided things up into three. We thought there's three fundamental skills which are not often learned in courses and are sort of the basis for everything else. So what were these, Samantha? There was... Um... So like I mentioned also already, the command line environment that might be new to, to many people when starting out with the computing side of research mm -hmm. that maybe before it was mostly like clicking because that's usually or very often what is easier to teach in the university courses. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, some software has it actually also quite openly available how you can in the in the graphical user interface how you can also do the same thing in the command line mm -hmm. and um so like if you know how to do one thing in the in the user interface um in the graphical user interface then it's not such a big step as you maybe think to go to the command line yeah yeah and the second of the fundamental skills was version control. So basically keeping your things organized well. And we don't really go into that in this course, but the other code refinery workshops are basically all about this. And, and then also yeah. data management. So uh, like really from how you have the data in your own like a uh, folder structure on your computer or wherever you have it. And then you had the macro data management as well. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we're, yeah, with that, we're almost out of time. So what comes next during the course? So, um, well, you can see the schedule. We've got a bunch of sort yeah, of high level be... talks on elaborating on many of the things we've seen here, sort of going through to, um, yeah. 